have you put those down since I saw you yesterday? <laughs> Let me just explain. This is from the kid who put from his the the When I left her yesterday, she was holding that Pringles can. Mm -hmm. I just saw her for the first time about 24 hours later. She's still holding that. Did you put that down to feed Kai? Excuse me, this is all I have to say. Do you know it's the same can? Oh my God, it's stuck! Ah, roll the open! How dare you make fun of my childhood trauma? <laughs> Save your energy. We have an hour. I said if I was going to do TV, because I was never not going to be myself. Where are the people who are a little bit different? You're sitting next to one on the couch. So let's just say that. Be yourself, but not too much of yourself. Now, here's Jason. Welcome to the Jason Show. I said, uh, let me fix my tie there. I got to look nice for the television. Let me say this. I, yesterday, I said this. Uh, if you're watching us from uh, uh, other parts of the country, we have a snowstorm going on. We haven't had any. We haven't had any snow all winter. And yesterday and today, uh, today is actually worse. It's a huge snowstorm. Yesterday, we only had eight people. Today, I didn't think we'd have any. Look at these people. They actually drove. Yeah. Because it's bad out there. It's really bad, and row two and three took reindeers to be here, so that's right, yeah. Thank you. We appreciate you. Let's start with this, my friends. Anyone who's been on a whale-watching trip knows you're, you're lucky to see anything, like literally anything, but people on a boat off the coast of California got mar more than they bargained for. Look at this. A dolphin, look at that. A dolphin in the Pacific was caught doing backflips. Yeah, look at that. And while that was happening, a humpback whale was swimming nearby. This be look at that. This species of dolphin is known for being real playful. Yeah. What? I guess those whale watchers got their money's worth. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I know. I. I was on a cruise, one of a, a whale watcher thing. I saw like one otter. So uh, yeah, <laughs> it's all right. Cue the music, Leo. Let's get going. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Kendall Mark, everybody. Hello, sweetness. Hello. How you doing? I feel fine. I you, feel great. You feel fine? I feel fine as I know what you're going to say. Something. How are those Pringles? How are those Pringles? Yeah, you brought These the can ones? with you. I know, and you laugh. Magically now, here? In our cold open, let me explain. Give me that real quick, if you will. Uh, I'm not going to eat them, don't worry. But in the 80s, what, what, we, what we were joking about was, I've told mm -hmm. the story a few times, I had a traumatic incident with a Pringles can in the 80s. Traumatic It incident. was. <laughs> See, those are nice people okay, right there, whatever. yeah. But I had a traumatic incident. Mm -hmm. I was, um, how do we say this? I was a puffy little kid. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and As I, one is oh, sometimes. Yeah, and know? I love to eat. Oh, I love to eat. And, um, <laughs> and I would eat an entire one of these without even thinking. Mm -hmm. And I went to stick my hand in the Pringles can. And you, if you grew up in the 80s, you know what I'm about ready to say. Thank you, top row. You know, I put my little fat hand in there. And there used to be... A, uh, metal. a metal little lip on these mm -hmm. Pringles can, and my, my puffy little hand, kid hand, got stuck in it, <laughs> and I was cutting myself, and I look at my dad, 
who barely talked to me on a good day, and he looked at me and he goes, well, if you wouldn't stick your whole f uh, hand in there, it wouldn't be a problem. And, um, and, and I, I got therapy for that. Don't worry about that. I'm good. Yeah, don't, you can laugh at that. I've been, I've been in therapy for years. Anyway, uh, and then they, my Aunt Char had to cut it off me, you know? So now we were talking about the fact that uh, kids are too protected these days. They don't, there's no, there's no, I mean, like in the 80s, thank you, Aaron, for clapping at that. Here's what I mean. In the 70s and 80s, uh -huh. they didn't give a rat's rear about us. Uh, kids today, you're lucky. You have, uh, uh, in, on your playgrounds, y'all have hamster shavings underneath oh, no, your playgrounds. Like rubber now. The, the rubber, rubber shavings. We had uh -huh. old old gravel like not not good blacktop underneath our monkey bars bad gravel like <laughs> if you would fall on it you would scrape three to four layers of skin off and and kids you know your curly slides that are made of plastic ours were made of hot metal hot metal Ouch. On a hot summer day, again, if you're wearing shorts, you would get done, you would have fun, but you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have skin on your back leg. You wouldn't have any skin, and you didn't care. I was in the era between, so I know exactly those slides, because my mom would take us to the park with those slides, and I'd be like, Mom, the other park with the good slides. You were spoiled. Yes. Yeah. You don't know suffering. Anyway, <laughs> let's get started, everybody. It's time for the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. Let's do this. That's that's real suffering. It's real suffering. Anyway, uh, healing from the half a haters. Actress Anne Hathaway is uh, speaking out about, remember the backlash that she had to deal with during her rise in Hollywood? Well, Anne is on the cover of the new Vanity Fair. There she is right there. Mm. Talking about, talking openly about being hated in Hollywood and online after co-hosting the Oscars that year with James Franco. Anne says things got even worse the following year when she won the Oscar for uh, the awful movie Les Mis, saying <gasps> it was the... It was awful. No, it was awful. It was awful. She was fantastic. No, 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 it was awful. It was uh, the lowest point in her professional and personal life. And Anne says she couldn't get a job because of concerns about how toxic her online identity was. No one would hire her. She says director Christopher Nolan, Academy Award winner now, saved her career by casting her in Interstellar. You guys remember this? Anne says that movie helped save her career. And today she says she no longer cares what others think of her. I read, uh, yeah, as you, yeah. you do you, boo boo. Theme of our show. I do remember that era, yes. and I don't, and and I don't prescribe to it, especially now. But to, ex I think to explain it, I think what Anne's situation was. Anne can come across a little precious mm -hmm. and a little, and I can say this because these are all my friends. You know how sometimes you roll your eyes at us theater kids? I think that opens her up because she is very actressy at times, mm -hmm. and people can read that wrong and think that she's too good and thus the, the, the online hate. Mm -hmm. But I think she's. I think she's great. I, I don't think she's her. any different than so many other actors and actresses. It just is the t the case, like, point in case of when one person says something and then it becomes this bigger rumor, like the game of telephone. Yeah. And suddenly, before we knew it, everybody just knew she was difficult. And it was like, but, but, but why do we know this about her? Yeah, because she you even know? said there wasn't one particular thing that she could point no. to. She's like, I didn't do X, Y, and Z. Right. It was just people just started... The rumors. The rumors that she was bad yeah right next up one of the most debated scenes in movie history who can forget watching this scene in theaters watch promise me now rose and never let go of that promise i promise never let go i will never let go jack Yeah. Spoiler alert, she let go and Jack died in icy death. That's right, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, in the years since Titanic hit theaters, many people believed that Rose should have moved over and made... Thank you, audience. <laughs> Jack should have moved over Rosha just a little bit and, and let Ro or Jack on that folding door, that floating door. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Lord. Lord Almighty. 
The audience isn't entirely about that. There are no. some people just think that... Save he, yeah. yourself, yeah. girl! Save yourself! Well, now someone can test that theory for themselves. <laughs> the actual door used in the filming of Titanic right there what? just sold at auction for $718,000. And photographer Eric bought it. No, I'm just joking. No, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he's now looking for a divorce attorney. Yeah. The door was the highest selling auction item. It beat, this is where I'm like, what? It beat the whip from Indiana Jones and Jack Nicholson's axe from The Shining. Oh. Here's it's a Johnny. Door. What? It's a door. Where do you put that? I, I get it, but the axe that Jack used? Right. Come on. I, I mean, that's what I would go for. <laughs> Yeah. Ah, red rum, red rum. Well, he didn't oh say God. that was the twins. I know, but yeah, I mean like, to be no, specific. Like he thing. said here, but yeah, I would get the axe, and I love, I love Titanic. What but would you do with it? <laughs> depends on the day. Yeah. And I would get the door to depends shield myself. Depends on the myself. situation. <laughs> depends how many Pringles you eat. That's right. Yeah. No, but I, I've, I've watched. It's called Heritage Auctions, mm -hmm. and I, I am, and they're on their mailing list just because yeah. I love to see what's in there. <laughs> What? You are such a nerd. You're on the Heritage Auctions mailing list. No one else thinks that's funny. I think that's really funny. First you shame my childhood trauma, <laughs> and and now you laugh at my mailing list. It's yes. just shame. It's all right. That's fine. Audience, don't worry. Again, therapy. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. He's fine. Back after this. Assassin of twenty dollars a free play at Grand Casino. We love you. Happy birthday, everybody. We love people celebrating their birthdays with us. And as soon as we're all done, me and the birthday people, uh, we're gonna go make naked snow angels out in the parking lot. That's right. Yeah. That sounds so fun. They didn't know that when they signed up. Let me just yeah. no, no. Front row's the, like really. It's in the fine print. It's in the fine yeah, print of sorry. that. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back. Imagine playing golf with one of the greatest athletes of all time. That was the case for pro golfer Justin Thomas, love Justin, uh, when he was a teenager because he got paired with Michael Jordan. He talked about it last night on The Late Show. It's our Late Night Rewind. You played around um, with Michael Jordan. How old are you here? I am probably 15 years old uh, in that picture. How did that happen? So I would be the caddy for the group. The first couple years, I'd, you know, I'd help him out. And, and finally, that, the third year, the last year they came out, um, he said, you know, he always called me Lil Man. He's like, Lil Man, go get your clubs. You're going to play the last seven holes with us. And you and Michael Jordan as a team. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he knew that I played golf, but he didn't know uh, that I was decent and nobody else <laughs> decent nobody else definitely uh yeah. had any idea so he goes i'll take a little man and for whoever wants us and everybody of course is looking at this person this kid who is uh you know 111 mm -hmm. pounds and um did he put any pressure on you no i mean i felt enough pressure just playing golf with michael jordan so yes. i think uh yeah he pretty much was just like all right i got him and how'd you do I made four birdies and seven holes and helped pay for my first car. <laughs> <laughs> he won. He won. <laughs> he won four thousand dollars that Heck day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now he makes like four million. But uh, Thomas is heavily featured in the latest season of uh, Netflix's Full Swing. Mm -hmm. Justin, and if you're not, you don't follow golf, but you follow Full Swing, Justin plays a critical role toward the end of the season mm -hmm. because uh, the team captain of the Ryder Cup is trying to decide whether to put Justin in the team. Mm -hmm. Justin did not have a good season, or mm -hmm. Keegan, mm -hmm. who did have a good season. And Justin is known, as you know, you right. follow golf, Justin is known as a great rah-rah cheerleader. Right. So even though he doesn't have a good season, mm -hmm. it's good to put Justin in there for the morale of the team, mm -hmm. and it ends up working out 
fairly well for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, he's and he's a very um, even when he has a bad season, you know that he can come up in big moments. And he's so, so. he's still so young. Yes, you forget how young he started to be a phenom. I know they're like what in their early. I mean, sorry, they're late twenties. Uh, yeah, I think Justin, or, or early thirties. I think he may be thirty he or thirty-one. And Speeth, they're good friends, and they're like, yeah, I mean, they're just. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like they're younger than me. Watch Full Swing, everyone. <laughs> it's on Netflix right now. More uh, more dish for you. Big news for fans of one of the biggest girl groups of all time. Something big. Thank you, Aaron. Aaron just ooed. Something big could be coming. I love you. From the Spice Girls, Scary Spice Mel B was on the third, fourth, fifth hour of the Today Show and dropped some big hints. Watch this. Us five are working on something that is. Are we going to be satisfied? Soon. Very. You're going to be very satisfied. Very. Because we saw that NSYNC got back together. They we put feel out like there's something happening. It's time for new music. In sync. I love in sync, but yeah, no. Where, <laughs> this is going to be really good, and the fans are going to be like really happy about really it. Can fire. we go see you on tour? You're going to be able to. <laughs> <laughs> There she goes. There she goes. We'll mark you down as a yes. That's right. Mel B, as you see, walked out before the publicist uh, freaked out. Fans <laughs> seem to think she confirmed that the group, all of them, all five members are going back on tour. Because, you know, for the rights, yes. Because for the longest time, mm -hmm. there was going to be a Spice reunion. Right. But they were going to miss, like, cumin. You know what I mean? It was no posh, posh. spice. Posh no was cumin. not going to be there. <laughs> and because she's like, no, I just want to do my fashion. I'm and I just can't really sing that well. <laughs> and then, and now, and she didn't really say that. That's no. me imitating her. No. But, but. You need, come on. I know. Well, you, okay. Now I love her, though, after that documentary about Beckham. I was Beckham. just going to say, people, like, are so hot on her right now. And she was so funny that, like, this is the time, if they're ever going to be like, come on, Posh, let's just do it. None of us do this anymore. It'll be funsies. Because we haven't seen them together since the London Olympics. It is an interesting thing. It's, it, I just mentioned Full Swing. Mm -hmm. And it is an interesting thing with Netflix where it can turn your popularity like yeah oh uh, the golfers are now popular right not just in the golf world but people are screaming them screaming at them now mm -hmm. they're like full swing right and then posh look what the david beckham netflix documentary did for posh mm -hmm. it reignited a fan base for her right it's it's just i don't know i just thought about that mm -hmm. next in the dish she may be 90 years old but carol burnett is still making us laugh she's a, uh, currently in a show I'm loving, Apple TV Plus's uh, Ro uh, uh, Palm Royale. Carol was uh, live on uh, was on live with Kelly and Mark Monday and talked about her wish for her upcoming 91st birthday. Is there something you wanted to do that you haven't done? That you haven't yet. done yet by the time by before you turn 90? Yeah. And you said George Clooney. Right. <laughs> <laughs> As I has George reached out? No, 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 but now I'm thinking about Bradley Cooper. <laughs> As she should. As she should. <laughs> the, the icon. Again, that word is thrown around. Mm -hmm. But with Carol, she's an icon, a legend. You put your favorite word like that in there. Carol turns again 91 at the end of April. Oh, Look at her. She's still a spitfire, too. Oh, doesn't miss a beat. And, uh -uh. and I, I said it in my review of Palm Royale. One of the it, only legends can do this. Carol is funny in a coma. Uh, Carol what? Burnett is funny. <laughs> Carol's in a damn coma for the entire first two episodes, and she's funny. Like, the, <laughs> nobody else can do that. I can't even wrap my head around this because, like, hello, go away, you don't move. Yeah, no. <laughs> you don't speak. It's like, the way know. she's sitting there in her wardrobe, and she's just laying there, she's and precious. her hair is done, and it's like, <laughs> I, if I'm in a coma, no one's going to be doing my hair. You know what I mean? I, I, I'll do your hair, Thank Jason. you. No, I mean, uh, Jeff will just put an Oprah Winfrey show hat on me. You know yes. what I mean? And, and send me on my way. <laughs> but no. Can I ask you something? Have you ever... Ever been in a coma? No. No. Okay. Have you ever... Because you're a youngin, yeah. and, and truth be told, the Carol Burnett show ended in 77. Uh -huh. I'm barely old enough to remember first run. I watched reruns with my grandma Mazak. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen 
an episode or anything from the Carol Burnett show? I've seen clips. Like, okay. it comes up on this show or yeah. something will go around, but I've never watched a full episode. Still holds up to this day. Yeah. Still, still holds up. Oh, it's, don't shame me. Yeah, I know. I am 34. Uh, do you, I'm do you sorry. Notice? I'm not even shaming you. I know. No. It's, it, it's still, oh, uh, there'll be another, there'll never be another show like that. Yep. Ever, ever in, in, in television. Up next, a big deal when it comes to award shows. So the Golden Globes is sticking with another network. Sticking with CBS. Uh, after moving to CBS this past year, the Globes just reached a big old deal, uh, a new deal to air on the iNetwork for the next five years. The show will also stream. Thank you. Big Golden Globe fans in our audience today. Uh, it's also going to stream live on Paramount Plus. Now, this year, this comes rather after uh, this year's ceremony saw a big boost in the ratings. Uh, it followed a football game, but uh, hey, ratings wins or right, ratings wins. Or Taylor Swift was in attendance. <laughs> or that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the deal also gives the Tiffany Network the right to the American Music Awards. See, now this is what I find more interesting, uh, which are owned by the same company as the Globes, uh, Dick Clark's company. Mm -hmm. the, why I think this is interesting is the American Music Awards back in the, the day mm -hmm. when we had... Uh, curly slides made of hot metal back in those days. Oh, then. The American Music Awards were bigger than the Grammys. They were a thing. If you were a music artist in the middle, early to mid-80s, you went to the American Music Awards. Michael Jackson, Stevie Wonder, Cher, Tina Turner, Madonna. It, it, it was a huge thing on ABC. Hmm. Maybe CBS can make it cool again. Um, and, you know, and now they're going to be home to both the Grammys, and the AMAs, which is oh. a, a, a good thing, because the only thing doing really well on network television right now are live events like football. Right. So if I'm CBS, I'm whipping out the checkbook right, for that. Yeah. Right. So they'll have like Monopoly and all the fun concerty shows. Yes. Cool. So good, good for deal them. for them. Hey, yeah. You know? Next, the director. <laughs> the director. Next in the dish, the director behind the Black Panther movies is getting ready for a new project. This time he's using the songs of a music icon close to our heart here in Minneapolis. Look. Yep. Ryan Coogler. Ryan Coogler will direct a jukebox musical of Prince songs. It's been in the works for more than five years. Now, let me be clear, though. This isn't going to be the story of Prince's life. It's just going to be using his music. You know, kind of like they, you know, Mamma Mia uses the music of ABBA, but it's not the ABBA life story. It's not, you know, right, right. when ABBA was a baby. You know, no, it's, 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 uh, you know. It could introduce a whole new audience to Prince, too. And, and I say this just as somebody who grew up, in, I'm on the younger end of millennial, right? Yeah. So you go to Gen Z and younger, they might have heard his music, but they don't really know who he is. I watched any of the Mamma Mia's, and that's how I knew that music. I didn't really know it as ABBA, per se, until then I was like, oh, this is a band? I like them. Oh, I know, don't look faint. I'm, I'm just, just saying. Aaron just passed out over I know, there. I mean, I'm uh, just yeah. saying. No, hey, however, whatever your gateway drug is to ABBA, it's great. We it's don't fine. care. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. great. It's fine. Fine. Mama Mia is the gateway drug, it's fine. Yeah. Just a little taste. A little taste. On behalf of the gays, we thank you. Yeah, there we go. Just, we don't care My how you get to ABBA. No, this is a good idea, and it's yeah. going to be a windfall to the Prince Estate. And, right. you know, they seem to have their, their stuff going uh, well. Paisley Park right down the road. Yeah. If you ever come to the Jason Show uh, to be in our audience like these people, uh, yeah. <laughs> In the winter, you'll get to make naked snow angels with us, and then, mm -hmm. and then right down the road. And I'm not talking a hop, skip, and a jump from yep. where we tape the show is Paisley Park. So make a trip if you're watching us from Orlando or Chicago. Come see us. Mm -hmm. Come see us. It's about an 11 minute yeah, drive. Yeah, it's about an 11 minute drive. <laughs> We're going to take a break. Hi, ma, more, uh, well, well, let me just tell you. I know, I'll be able to talk, I swear, yeah. Just run the tees. We'll be right back. We'll be back in a moment, yeah. <laughs> when I like something, I really like something. Coming up in just a little bit. They are the Japanese pancakes I had a few weeks ago that I can't stop talking about. Well, some guests today are going to show me how to make them. And then a little bit later, a little game to test my aging memory. Name the past guest. Can I do it? Can we do it? You'll see when we come back. Well, 
they are the pancakes that I can't stop talking about. Like I said in the tease, you know me by now. When I like something, I really like it, and I annoy people that I talk, I talk about things so much. <laughs> On a recent trip to San Diego, I had a Japanese souffle pancakes, which have become uber popular in the last few years. I went to a spot uh, called Morning Glory in San Diego, and... Uh, let me also say this. If you're ever in San Diego, I said this in my Instagram post. I would fly back to San Diego. This is no joke. Just to eat at Morning Glory. Here are the pancakes from Morning Glory's Instagram page. It's, it's one of the things they're known for. The pancakes are growing in popularity across the country. Here in the Twin Cities, we luckily don't have to go very far to indulge in the fluffy goodness. Audience, give it up for Macy Lee from 36 Cafe in St. Paul. Macy, thank you for being here. Thank you. Okay. I, I, more than pancakes, I love a good backstory, and I love a story of people just zigging when everyone thinks they should, should zag. Correct me if I'm wrong, you got a law degree and then you're like, peace out, and started this. Am I right on that? That is right. I have absolutely no culinary background. I just thought, oh, you know what? I should open a cafe. I love desserts, and I love decadent desserts. And who knew that souffle pancakes would go viral? And uh, 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 I just can't believe that. I mean, you, <laughs> it's not like, uh, no offense, like, I, it's not like you went for, I don't know, uh, I, I, I don't even know, like, a small school, but you went to law school. I know. I love that. <laughs> were you were you surprised when everything went viral? I mean, what was that day like? Well, you know, I was overwhelmed. This was supposed to be, the cafe was supposed to be like a side gig, and I yeah. was supposed to continue with my day profession. <laughs> and it went viral, and I was like, oh my gosh, I can't do this. So I dropped everything, and I went and managed the cafe, and then you know what happened? COVID hit. Did you? Oh, because oh, when did you open? Uh, November of 2019. Okay, uh, let me just, I hate when people go and say, I know how you feel, but full disclosure, I too opened a business in, in November of 2019. I feel you. I know what that is like. <laughs> you get very excited and then it's like, oh, a global pandemic. Wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful. And then you picked back up. How was that for you? Did you, Was it hard we, to get the momentum again? You know what? I have to say I'm so thankful for COVID because it, ta it taught us to survive. Yeah. It taught us to pivot, to uh, branch out and create new lines. And to this day, we're so thankful because we stayed in business because COVID allowed us to get really creative. I, I yeah, again. I know what you mean. We, we had to do the exact same thing. So let's get to this. So explain what these are exactly sure so these are our fluffy souffle pancakes we've got three lines at our cafe we've got our dine-in menu and then our creme souffle line which is our newest line this year so our dine-in menu if you come to the cafe we've got our classic which we call it a trio it's a bed of three pancakes um, it's really really popular that's our classic and then we have our duo line which is our two souffle pancakes they're double stacked and this is our apple crumble strawberry shortcake lemon blueberry they're all incredibly popular Popular. And then our newest line that we released this year, which is our creme souffle dessert style stuffed souffle pancakes. We've created over 30 plus flavors. Every week we would rotate the flavors. So these are our creme souffle and they're for grab and go. They're refrigerated. Our tiramisu, matcha tiramisu, classic tiramisu, carrot cake, a sweet potato, a raspberry cheesecake, <laughs> mint choco, key lime, or cookies and cream. These are just to name a few. So we Okay. We're going to start whipping because it's very time specific. But before you do that, I have to say, in almost 10 years of The Jason Show, I've never felt fear of the audience rushing me. <laughs> but I, I fear that rows one and two are moments from rushing to get these pancakes. Okay, what do we do, my friend? So we have a, a dry mix that you can purchase on our website, too. It's got the instructions on the back. We're going to follow that instruction. I've got some egg whites here. I've got six egg whites. I've got two pans, one for me, one for you. I've split the batter in half. Okay. Um, and for the sake of time, I've prepped everything. So Thank we're going to start our uh, KitchenAid. You could mix the egg whites with a hen mixer or with a KitchenAid stand mixer. We're going to start at three minutes, uh, whisk it, and then we'll put the egg whites into the batter. Okay. So, and again, like I said, it's a very specific three minutes, right? It, it's it's that's very part time of the sensitive. secret. Yes. Because it has to, the whipping of, correct me if I'm wrong, I know a little bit about baking, the fluffiness of that 
is what helps the rise. Am I right on that? That is right. Okay. And the temperature is also the technique, as well as the batter. So it's everything. Okay. It's a little art and science together. We're okay, here start. we go. Let's go ahead and turn that bad boy on. Okay. And I've started my timer, so I've got a timer. Okay. It's oh. going to go for three minutes. I've started my uh, pan. Usually I use a griddle at the cafe. I've started my pan. I've put some um, oil spray in it just okay. to get ready. And I've got a little water so that I could spray a little water so I could steam. Uh, just my last question before we take a break and come back on the other end. Was this a recipe that you learned growing up? or No, I crafted this recipe. So I spent hundreds oh and goodness. hundreds of hours. And I just... I just love desserts and I wanted something really, really decadent and good, so I just handcrafted everything. I... Okay. I just adore you. And most times in life, people get one marketable skill, and, and then you have several. Okay, we're going to take a break, see how this ends up when we come back. Back in a moment, everybody. Back in a moment. We're back with Macy from 36 Cafe. Again, if you come visit us, go to St. Paul after Prince and go to 36 Cafe. Okay, that timed out perfectly. That did. So I have six egg whites in here. It's uh, whisked up. I'm going to do half and you're going to do half, all right? Okay. See, again, that's what that's why it has to whip to make the... I know a little bit, not as much as you. Know, I'm, I'm just trying. Right. Okay, there we All go. Right. So I have a spatula on that end for you. Okay. And you're gonna take the spatula, and we're gonna work together. Okay. And we're gonna mix it, and it's really time sensitive. So usually, I get this done within like less than 30 seconds. Because you have to fold it yeah, quick. Yeah, Because you, you don't want to get the you don't want to get the air out, right? That's right. And you don't want your um, egg whites to basically flatten out. So. Yeah. Wow, you're doing pretty good. You're a pro. <laughs> All right, and then the other piece to getting beautiful pancakes, uh, we do use ice cream scoops to scoop them on. So once you've folded it in, I've already sprayed the pan with some um, oil spray. I'll add a little more just so the pancakes don't burn. Okay. I've got my temperature at medium heat here. Okay. And we're going to scoop it on, all right? Okay. So you're going to use your ice cream scoop, and you're going to scoop it on, and you're going to put it on top. Okay. You want to top it off uh, to the one I just put in? You want, you want to put it on the top? Yeah. Right there? Yes. Okay. Pretty good. All right. Oh, mine's falling. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Oh. So we're going to do two because okay. the pan's a little smaller. I'm going to add a little water. Okay. Lower my heat. It's at medium, and I'm just going to cover it, and I'm going to start the time at three minutes. And that's side one. That's yeah, side one. It's gift flips two times. Okay. And uh, I... I am so excited right now, and I, I, again, in the commercial break, Erin Schwab came up to me and she was, I don't know what to do. I, I just, and everyone just wants to eat all of this. What is your favorite flavor? Do you have one? My favorite is the lemon blueberry. So all of our sauces are house made, with the exception of condensed milk, but we make our own blueberry compote, we make our own lemon curd, we make our own uh, crumbles, we make our own um, apple crumbles, and all of that. So everything's house made, but my favorite is the lemon blueberry. Were you, I, uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, but was this inspired by a trip? It was inspired by a Tell trip. Tell me about so that. In 2017 or 2016, I can't remember exactly when, I went to Thailand and I had a dessert called a honey toast. It's a thick brick, uh, brick toast toasted with honey drizzled and then uh, topped with ice cream and whipped. And I just absolutely fell in love with it. Yeah. Um, and I thought, you know, I came back and I thought I should open a cafe and have the best desserts. And these and are... And these are called souffle pancakes. Souffle pancakes. Okay. We don't have the honey toast here today, but it was really souffle pancakes that. Yeah, and then. Took, the, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm that sorry. That took the cafe viral. See, I can't even. I'm so. I want to eat all of these. I'm normally more composed, Macy. I've been doing this a while, <laughs> but I, I, I'm not joking. When I was at that restaurant, I, I, they came by me, and I didn't order them at first. They came by me, and they just because they are unusual looking, and they do they. They are striking, and I asked what they were, and they told me, "Like, okay, order them up. I want all of them." Okay, how how much? Uh, we have about a minute and twenty. Now, 
this is normal, so the full thing will take how long? About 15 to 20 minutes, give or take, depending on what steps go involved, gets uh, uh, put in the process. Wow, so it's it's not a quick, it's it not a quick not. thing. It is not. Oh my. Although I have to tell you, everyone who comes to our cafe says it's incredibly delicious and worth the wait. Oh, uh, Macy, no one is doubting that. Um, <laughs> rows one, two, and three can back uh, can back that up. Yeah. What again? Here it is, everybody. The 36 cafe. Oh, oh. <gasps> Macy, that's beautiful. I love thank the you. decor. That's oh, great. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So again, if you come here to the Twin Cities, come to the Jason Show. Go see Paisley Park, and then go to St. Paul. See, I'm planning your damn trip for you. And then, <laughs> and then go to 36 Cafe uh, in St. Paul, and oh look. Okay, oh. now mine doesn't look real good. I'm sorry about that. Mine's. That's my first one We're ever. We're gonna flip it. It looks like I smell a little burnt. So, oh. Okay. I'm so sorry. We burnt our pancakes on air. It's fine. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's fine. It's look at these. Forget that I did this. Don't worry about that. I'm so oh. But I promise you, we won't serve for No, no. <laughs> we'll look at these at the end of the show. Give it up for Macy, everybody, to learn more. Head to 36cafemn.com and follow them on social. Please come back. I will love. Thank you. you. We'll be right back. Back in a moment, everybody. Mm -hmm. At the end of the show, mm -hmm. in that commercial break, Kendall, mm -hmm. me, social media director Addy, we devoured most of those, yeah. and we will tell you how they are at the end of the show. <laughs> All I'm going to say is I'm near tears. Uh, in my 20-plus <laughs> years in the TV biz, I've had the honor of interviewing countless celebrities. I didn't get a picture with all of them, but the Jason Show research team... managed to dig up several old pictures of me with various stars and those pictures are the inspiration for get ready to clap audience it's game time here we go oh maybe not oh there we go it's broken yeah there we go it's eating we are a fine-tuned machine there we go yeah Leo's We're eating, all, yeah. The, the whole control room's eating now okay it's time to put me to the test. Kendall will go through a series of old photos of me with different famous faces, but we blocked out the star, and I have to test my nearly 50-year-old memory, okay? Okay. Kendall, take it away, Wink Martindale. It's a good game. All right, Leo. First celebrity, please. Who do you think this is, Jason? Uh, Would you like a clue? That is Paige Davis. Sure is. That's Paige Davis. From Trading Spaces, my buddy, my pal, instant friendship. Mm -hmm. That's only happened a few times. We formed an instant friendship mm -hmm. during that interview that lasts to this day. Yeah. I think you're going to want to know this. I think you're going to know this next one. Bring it up, Leo. Okay. <laughs> oh, Sarah Jessica Parker. Uh -huh. That's right. Yes. <laughs> By the way... By the way, it's SJP's birthday this week. Happy birthday, Carrie. Oh. Love you. Yeah, this was at the Mall of America mm -hmm. for the opening of her um, store. And they asked me to moderate uh, the Q&A. She was duh, lightful. She smelled great. <laughs> I stole some shoes for you. Did yeah. You stole some shoes for I ran, me. I, I go, Sarah, look over there. And I ran out with some it's shoes. Fine, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. And she autographed them. It was awesome. Okay, number three. <gasps> In the newsroom. First of all, I look like I'm 11. Um, you do. You look quite young. That is Connie Chung. It's Connie yes. Chung. That was that was my news anchoring days. I believe mm -hmm. that's probably judging by how I look, 2010, 2011. I believe. Yeah. You're just a baby. I'm just a baby. Okay. All right, number four, Leo. Who could it be? Same era. Yep. Wendy Williams. Is it? Wendy Williams. It she was so great. She was a blast. It's a beautiful uh, that's, picture of both of you. Yeah, that is a good picture of me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there we go. Again, I, I look at four, 14 in nice. years old. That's nice. Okay. okay, number five. I'm excited about this. Oh, easy. Uh, that's Zach Efron. Yes, it is. There it is. Yeah. Did he smell he was, good? Yeah. This. Um, 
This was for one of those horrible Nicholas Sparks movies. Charlie uh, St. Cloud? Charlie St. Cloud, That no. was not a horrible movie. Oh, it was absolutely, absolutely <laughs> awful. But he was so nice to everybody, yeah. to the whole crew. He was delightful, and he smelled good, too. That's all I really want yeah, to know. Yeah, he smelled good. Okay, yeah. number yeah. six is a two-for-one. I'm sorry, what? Number six is a two-for-one. Number six is a two-for-one. Yeah. Two eggs. Two oh, kids. um, the same era. Yep. Um, that is... Like Wendy McCle uh, McClellan and Kristen Wiig. Hello, yes. Bridesmaids. From Bridesmaids. Were they here for Bridesmaids? They were here for Bridesmaids, yeah. They were doing, and they were, we laughed. I got to tell you, it was one of those days at work where we laughed until we cried. I mean, they were so, and nice. Mm -hmm. Very, very. I forgot that they were physically in the building, Jeff. Yeah, okay. Good one. Okay, number seven. You like this one. <laughs> That's my clue. Oh, 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 that's Academy Award winner, Emma Thompson. Uh -huh. Yes. Do you want to know the clue? What? Because you like it. I, I, Do you want to know the clue? What you was don't the, like clue? the clue? Bloody. Oh, bloody. bloody. Yeah. Um, I have, there's a moment, if you ever come to the studio audience, <laughs> I have a moment with Emma that I, it's a behind the scenes story that I always tell the studio audience that I can't say on TV, nope. but I'll tell you guys later. Okay. Yeah, there yeah, we go. That's why yeah. the clue is It's funny. great. It's a great story. Okay, number eight. Pull her up. Oh, Kevin James. Gosh, you're good at this. There we go. Yeah. Definitely and, get you. But can I tell you? Can I tell you when I see that, all I'm seeing is my tie down to my butt. I mean, oh, like, yeah. I needed to learn how to tie a tie at that point. It it's, was uh, a look. It, it was a look back No, it was. You're being very nice. It, it, was. it was a mistake, yeah. Okay, we're doing another two for one. Okay. Leo? Let me see. Leo. It, oh. it didn't work? Oh, okay. Oh, okay, number nine, we'll just skip. Okay, number ten, then. Let me see. Is that one working? We're getting there. We're getting there. The suspense is killing everyone. The hamster is turning the wheel in the control room. The hamster is also eating the nope. pancakes. We don't have it. Do we have number 11, 12, 13? Do you want me to just go through all the celebrities? Are there any? Have? Leo in the control room. Do we have any? Oh, that's... Still have Kevin there James. There we go. Oh. Oh, here we go. Aaron Brockovich. Uh, no. The Give clue is Police Academy. Is it the very last one? No. Sorry, I'm. S oh, dancing, dancing, the blonde. Oh, Julian Huff. Yes. Okay. Yes. From, oh, she did. She did a. Uh, she did that awful uh, remake of Footloose that never should have been no, done. No, it was great. My neighbor was in that. I don't care if your mom was in it. It was awful. Patrick was in no, that. It never should have been made. It was terrible. I love Anyway, that movie. we'll be right back. Back in a moment, everybody. Back in a moment. <laughs> I said this uh, jokingly earlier, we want to see you in our audience. Be sure to sign up right now to get your free tickets to The Jason Show. Head to eventbrite.com and search The Jason Show. Pick a date. Join the fun. Like I told you, I can tell you stories I can't tell you on TV. You're in by 9.30 Central and you're out by 11.15 and we guarantee a good time. Uh, if you don't have a good time, hold on to your receipt and take us back to any gap. Uh, we'll be right back. Back in a moment, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> audience that braves the weather today, right, Kendall? We appreciate them. So, uh, we want to thank uh, Macy, who was uh, the owner, who is the owner of 36 Cafe here locally in St. Paul, making the Japanese souffle mm -hmm. pancakes. Um, it, 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 there's a lot of food that comes through here, and I rarely say this, and it, we're getting ready to do our 10th season. When I really like something, I tell you, if I, if I just like it, I just like it. We move on to the next segment. Those pancakes are one of the best things I've eaten in 10 years on this show. I mean, yeah, one of my Bravo. favorite things. 
Brown one of my one of my favorite things that I've eaten. And you can at home can buy yeah, it too. Don't forget because <laughs> if you're watching us from Orlando or Chicago or wherever or Madison, you can get the mix at home. Uh, go to let me. I want to get her. It is 36cafemn.com and order this mix. Make this for your family or come visit us here in the Twin Cities. It's so good. Did you like it? You ate them. Forget me. Did I like them? I inhaled them with you. Yeah. It was like a The lemon blueberry. I would slap somebody for those. I really would. Just not you, but I'm just saying, yeah. Maybe Jeff. Anyway, tomorrow on The Jason Show, the TikTok stars, the hockey guys join us in studio. Meet the guys spreading love across the country with their funny hockey videos. I can't wait for that. But right now, that's going to do it for us. If you're watching, and you're a kid that's being bullied, go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. We'll see you tomorrow. Let's go eat more pancakes, Kendall.